true story. Love is looking for us all, and he's the best hunter that's ever been. For he goes before all things, he created all things, he wins. <laughs> it's that simple. But to help everyone understand that, at uh, Jerusalem, he was teaching his 70 uh, other disciples, not, not of the court 12 that were training to be apostles, set apart. He had a, another 70 disciples. Many would soon be leaving because there was going to be some a schism. Okay. But the Lord let us know what hog ate the cabbage. And he let us know that the angelic are ministering flames of fire that are dispatched by heaven many times to keep us from uh, being hurt or hurting ourselves. And uh, ministering flames of fire are they. So by his word, the Lord, through his intercession, having stirred up the uh, angel, the cherub, um, Bethesda he troubled the waters and uh, that came forth because Christ went to Bethesda and uh, the Lord had supercharged that area through his prayer, his living word that went before him and many ever since they finally understood this because they're tired of uh, festering uh, fears and tears right and uh, the truth is that the perfect love can cast out all fear. So uh, many have been holding on to the pretty uh, pearl of uh, great price that uh, goes before all people. And praise God that if we let the pearl of love to do its work, that we'll start seeing it new in a deeper light and the reflection of his glory will be every color of the rainbow for all attuned. But uh, unless you take a close look at it, it all seems to be only one color. But as it's concentrated upon and magnified, it's easy to see that it's never been one color. And people weren't aware of color then all of a sudden you get a step closer to love, it becomes vibrant, it becomes huge. And Christ announced that the seraphim, the cherubim, messenger angels, uh, archangels, all had been called to assist with mankind at different times and would be continually. So um, in the spirit it came to pass that our carpenter of the ages he then commanded uh, within the, the silence of his own mind, and he, he did not even need to speak. He only needed to believe it and, and thank it into being because he was the living word. So in the spirit, it came to pass to rev up the engines of the ministry of love that would uh, bring forth uh, all the truth of peace that man could walk in. So within the spirit, he said, now come forth then, O mighty cherubim, enter now into the eerie day of the Lord, which speedily comes forth front and center. Let it be diverted so it does not end with the angriest uh, oblivion, not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love. Let it be changed, because prophecy has never been told to tell the future, but to change the future before its maddening and desolate beginning. Come forth then also, O oh, indestructible seraphim, into the midst of doom to divert that as well. Uh, a doom that is just waiting to happen by the ignorance of men, because men realize not that there is no darkness but ignorance alone. For he, uh, he knew that the day of the Lord would be a most destructive day of devastating evening uh, and a pitch black night of gross darkness for every foolish 
soul who's never desired for any light to wipe away their inward darkness. Lament, therefore, all of wasted flesh, if mankind will not arise in the brotherhood of man, and be though otherwise only will all just be transformed into food for worms that shall never perish on our rot if we will not change. Because the Lord knew that in these days of his latter day Daniel, who I am, Daniel 12, 13, the latter day Daniel would arise. He knew that uh, his the trial of all flesh, Revelation 3, would come, bringing his word of patience to keep us all from the temptation of not changing. We must change by love. Now, insofar as the uh, new uh, 70 disciples of the Lord were concerned, getting back to their training, uh, that day it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, Israeli day under the, the noontime sun. And it came about that Jesus started becoming the son of holiness and the son of love that was also arising within their beating hearts that were starting to beat more passionately than ever before because he was arising within the splendor of his magnificence with his beneficence going before him, his benevolence and charity, a whirlwind of his adoration he was offering for anyone to take. And he was therefore preparing his evangelists uh, with a lot of teaching on a very wide range of sanctified subjects Blessed were those open-minded seven score souls, those 70. And uh, they were thoroughly convinced, most of them. But soon something would fall, be falling apart with those 70. And contention in their midst would come. Because Satan was roaming as a roaring lion, seeing whom he could devour. And um, so they were convinced at that point uh, that following... Uh, even though following our carpenter of the ages kind of sounded crazy to them. In spite of that, uh, they refused walking away because they loved him, <laughs> pure and simple. And they came to believe that nobody else could ever show them the golden road to God's very best good graces better than he could. He had spiritual glasses and he could just tell the way. So praises of Christ wasn't necessary. Uh, uh, they showed his pray and praise by their action and reaction to them. And fortunately, those spiritually hungry souls, especially those 70 at that point, they didn't really even need to meditate on praises up to that point, but that would soon be changing. And uh, for he was walking amongst them daily as uh, they exalted his love. And they knew that Jesus, uh, their living praise, would always be with man and spirit as long as the planets were turning and as long as the stars above were burning and nothing could convince them otherwise ever at all. And our good shepherd additionally taught his flock that the pride of vanity always stands before all enemies of his gospel's greatest good news. Therefore, he stressed to those disciples that pride is always king unto foolish souls who are thinking that God shall give them heed. And God, for God always ignores haughty people born of pride walking thereof. For they'll always be on the outer edge of heaven, saved by the skin of their teeth, as second-class citizens of the Most High Kingdom, if they will not uh, walk in the love that God has given them. Furthermore, that desire of the nations taught those disciples well to magnify the Lord Jehovah always, and he also, also assured them that as long as they believed in love, that even their fondest dreams would come true, for that is faith and love in action. For such would God happily do for all of those with faith. But he emphasized at the same time that whosoever embraces humility while welcoming the word of God, they also need to purge their hearts before them and let love clean them up. Then he verily said, 
that they needed to exalt God as king of heaven, but he explained it was only the humble who would be granted God's ear, as all others would con continually be cast out of his presence of love if they were so proud that they let their love start uh, dwindling. We need that love light on as a verb in motion so we're not part of the walking dead. And above everything, those 70 were then taught, uh, and Jesus happily declared unto them that it was the highest wisdom to understand that joyful are those, most, most joyful are those who will be willing to do anything for the perfect love of God. And that reminds me of that meat loaf, loaf song, I will do anything for love. And that is what we all need to be singing of the change that needs to start with each and every one of us. As Michael Jackson sa says in saying, it starts with that man in the mirror, that person in the mirror, and we must uh, start loving that person first or else we can't love anyone. And it, it's time that all the shame and disgrace, as it is described in Isaiah 25, will come unto all people believing God's kingdom age word that his forgiveness and love are one and the same thing and cannot be divided. And if that is true, all of our religion is obsolete.